Well, thank you all very much again for being here this afternoon. We very much appreciate your participation in our third annual Governor Summit on Economic Development. And I see that uh, you're all taking advantage of the networking opportunities here, which is great. Hope you enjoyed the uh, speakers we had talking about their wonderful businesses that we heard first thing off this morning and then the different breakout sessions we had. I was able to catch a couple of them and saw that we really had some great speakers talking about real world things they're doing here in Nebraska. So uh, really appreciate everybody being here today. We also have a real treat here as well. Uh, we have the Small Business Administration Administrator, Linda McMahon, who is going to be talking to us a little bit about what she's doing in her agency to be able to help foster that economic growth all across our great country. And before I bring the administrator up, I want to just say that, I and mean, I mentioned this this morning, that as a governor, working with this administration has been amazing. And it's really been a night and day difference from this administration to the last administration. This administration has been so accessible, and, and in my marks this morning, I, I kind of laid out all the different cabinet heads we have had here in the state, and Administrator McMahon is just the, the latest in the string of those who keep coming to Nebraska. And it just is so important that the administration cares what we think. They're listening to us. They send their cabinet heads out here to talk to the people in the states and get them out of that bubble in Washington, D.C. And I think that that is so invaluable to get that feedback from the rest of the country into that little bubble that is Washington, D.C., so they know what's going on in the rest of the country. And the other thing I want to say about this administration is if you look at these cabinet heads, I think this is probably the best cabinet we have ever had in our country's history. There are so many people that have real world private sector experience that are bringing that into this administration. Uh, I will tell you that, uh, again, that's one of uh, our administrator, McMahon here, has got real world private sector experience, successful business experience that she is bringing to running the Small Business Administration. And you see that throughout all of the cabinet. Uh, you know, at, we're an agricultural state. I can tell you that we could not ask for a better uh, Secretary of Agriculture than Sonny Perdue is just one example. But uh, all the cabinet heads, you just go down the line, are just successful people in their own right that are truly taking time out of their lives to give service to this country by being a part of this administration. And Administrator McMahon is no different. So please help me give a warm Nebraska welcome to our Administrator, Linda McMahon. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> you know, the, uh, I, I so appreciate that warm welcome. The first time um, I ever had a standing ovation is when I was uh, campaigning for uh, the U.S. Senate in Connecticut. And I was a brand new candidate. I'd never run for anything before. And I really wasn't very well recognized, you know, throughout the state, except from a little celebrity I had from this other company that I was part of. And um, so I go into this hotel, and I'm actually there because I've come to speak on behalf of someone else who's running, as well as to have some uh, comments, you know, relative to, my, to myself. So I came up the steps. There were people coming in behind me, and um, we walk into this hotel room, you know, a banquet room, and everybody stands up and applauds, and I go because I wanted to see who was coming in behind me. And then I realized that they had actually stood up for me and I was quite surprised. And it still, it still never fails to, uh, to make me very humble when that happens. So I very much appreciate that. So formally, good afternoon. And thank you so much for inviting me here today to speak with you, Governor Scott, Governor Ricketts, pardon me. <laughs> what a pleasure. <laughs> it's, uh, it's just a, a real, real pleasure to be here. Your family's business is proof that successful companies can really start anywhere, grow globally, and maintain their local roots. As head of the U.S. Small Business Administration, and as President Trump likes to say, small businesses in this country are big business because there are 30 million of them, and, uh, and I advocate on their behalf. 
and I'm working to help even more entrepreneurs have the tools that they need to start, grow, and succeed in business in every community in America. For the past 14 months, I've been traveling all over the country, getting out of that Washington bubble, absolutely, meeting with small business owners. Nebraska is the 40th state I visited since May was a year ago, and I love hearing from entrepreneurs about their ideas and challenges. And I do think, Governor Ricketts, you're correct, uh, that President Trump clearly invites the comments, the concerns, from the citizens, the businesses, our educators, from all over the country because he really does want to know what people are thinking and how he can better serve. I call my tour the Ignite Tour uh, because I hope it'll spark ideas and drive action both in communities that I visit and in Washington, D.C. It started with the Spark Leadership Conference a little over a year ago, and then I set out on this Ignite Tour with the pledge that I would visit every one of the 68 district offices of SBA throughout the country. So I have been from Puerto Rico, a territory, I've up to Alaska. I've been to the West Coast, the East Coast, places in between. So I'm really proud to be here today. It's truly an honor to advocate on behalf of America's 30 million small businesses. Listening to them helps me better serve as their voice in the administration. Today I'll be visiting Elliott Equipment in Omaha, which manufactures trucks and cranes, and I think those are pretty cool things, and that it exports them all over the world. Governor Ricketts and I were talking about the STEP program a little earlier and how beneficial that is uh, to businesses here in Nebraska. Owner Jim Glazer says he's been growing ever since he acquired the company in 1991, and I'm proud that the SBA has played a role in that success. Elliott Equipment is just one of the 168,000 small businesses here in Nebraska. They employ 394,000 workers, nearly half of the state's workforce. That's not Elliott, that's small businesses in Nebraska. And that's a lot of jobs, depending on small business success. I know you've been hearing a lot today about how the state is promoting economic development. I'm happy to share with you a bit about what's happening in Washington to ensure small businesses do continue to grow. This is a terrific time for small businesses in our, in our country, and that's reflected in the tremendous amount of optimism that I see in both the entrepreneurs that I meet with and in the macro economy. This unemployment rate is at about 4%, with more people entering the workforce as more jobs are being created. In multiple surveys done by the U.S. Chamber of Commerce, NFIB, National Federation of Independent Businesses, CNBC, and others, entrepreneurs report the highest ever levels of optimism. And from my perspective, as head of the SBA, there is no better signal of small business optimism than entrepreneurs willing to take a risk on a business by seeking funding or counseling to start or grow a business. Since President Trump took office, the SBA has provided loan guarantees of about $44.2 billion to small businesses, creating almost 410,000 jobs. Here in the state of Nebraska, SBA provided loans of about $146 million in fiscal year 17. In fiscal year 18, we're on track to exceed that. So what's the source of the optimism? I think a lot of it comes from what small businesses see in Washington. I applaud President Trump for delivering on his promises to make regulatory reform and tax cuts key pillars of his pro-growth agenda. Let's talk a little bit about regulation reform first. Often entrepreneurs tell me it's not a specific regulation they can cite. It's just all of them together that puts a chokehold on their businesses and the sheer volume of rules and mandates that they have to keep up with. Most small businesses, and many of you probably are small businesses in this room, don't have teams of lawyers, compliance officers on staff to make sure that everything's being followed. 
The CEO of the company, and I can speak to this from years past in growing a company, is often the receptionist, the accountant, and the janitor too, if that's necessary. And those regulations just take time away from what time that they just don't have. And the average cost of compliance for small businesses, this astounded me, runs about $11,700 per employee per year. So you can imagine if you could take that money, put it in your business, and have it contribute to your bottom line. And by the way, the compliance cost for small, small businesses is higher than it is for big businesses per employee. Under President Trump, costly, job-killing federal regulations are being cut. For every new regulation created under this administration, he required two be cut, but we have cut 22. They've been eliminated. And this president, this spring, the president signed a long-anticipated bill to reform a regulation known as the Dodd-Frank Act. And I've heard from uh, our community banks from all over the country how pleased they were about this. The reform provides relief to small and community financial institutions from overly burdensome regulations and frees them from annual oversight measures that included stress tests and other compliance measures. For institutions with assets under 10 billion, it provides relief from the Volcker Rule. The reform also frees smaller financial institutions from CFPB mortgage reporting requirements, allowing them to spend more time and efforts on serving their customers. This will make it easier for community banks and credit unions to lend money. Terrific news for entrepreneurs seeking business loans. You know, I talk to some of our community banks when I'm touring, and, um, and I was asking them, I said, what, 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 what bothers you most about the regulations other than they, the obvious? And they often tell me, you know, we know the people in our community. We know when they might have fallen on hard times. We know what their character is. We know what they're capable of doing. We know how their families chip in. And the regulations really tied our hands in being able to be more helpful to get them through a tough time. So I think that having that ability back again is really critical to see the growth in our communities. We know that access to capital is critical, and it's a key factor in whether small businesses succeed or fail. A few years ago, I met a small business owner in Connecticut who wanted to grow his company, expand his footprint, add more equipment, and create more jobs. He said his local bank, where he'd been a client for decades, wouldn't give him a loan. He said he was told by his banker, listen, you're asset rich, but you're cash poor. And he looked at his banker and said, well, I already know that. <laughs> if I had the cash, I wouldn't be here asking you for a loan. And what happened was he couldn't get the loan. It sort of reinforces what I was talking about. He didn't expand, he didn't buy more equipment, and he didn't hire more workers. And it's a clear example of how Dodd-Frank's restrictions on lending by community banks clearly stifled economic growth and killed jobs. This new legislation will make a real difference in the lives of our small business owners. Another White House initiative that's having a major impact on small business owners is the tax cuts. As you know, most small businesses will now be able to deduct 20% off their taxable income even before they get into the savings from the new lower tax brackets. And for the first five years, they'll be able to write off any investment in new equipment the year that it's made. Here's an example of how that plays out in real life. I was down in uh, Jacksonville, Florida, and I was visiting a landscaping company, and uh, the owner you know, and I were walking around, and so I was asking him, you know, what, what's being beneficial? Are, are the tax cuts helping you out? And he stopped dead in his tracks, and he pointed. He said, you see that truck over there? I call that my tax cut truck. He says, $80,000. If it weren't for the tax cuts and being able to write this off, I wouldn't have been able to have bought that truck this year. I wouldn't have been able to have serviced my customers better and to hire a new worker. So it was just what he needed you know, to be able to grow his business. He said he'd hired people and he was raising wages. He was also providing bonuses and benefits and creating more jobs. 
And I hear that story over and over and over again. Not just small businesses, but big businesses too. And this is just the beginning. For years, small businesses have been asking for tax cuts, regulatory reform, and improved access to capital. This White House is listening and doing something about it. It is continuing to listen to pursue policies that will help them thrive. And that's really my top goal as head of the SBA is revitalizing the spirit of entrepreneurship in America and an environment where small businesses can start and succeed. Entrepreneurs find that owning a business is one of the most effective ways to secure a financial future for themselves, provide for their families, and exercise their commitments to their communities, and drive our country's economic growth. SBA wants to make sure these goals are more accessible to Americans. You know, if you look around your communities, what's the glue in those communities? It's your small businesses. What name do you see on the back of the Little League uniforms? Where do you go to when you need a contribution for local police department or fire department? It's to the small businesses who really support those things in their communities. That's why I love small businesses. I love business in general. I'm particularly fond of small businesses. And it takes me to my second goal, raising awareness of our programs. I think the SBA is the best kept secret in the country. It's one of the things I like to talk about when I go out. The SBA is the only resource for small businesses backed by the strength of the federal government. And most of its services, things like counseling, mentorship, and training on accessing government contracts are offered free of charge. And it doesn't just exist in Washington. We have 68 district offices, at least one in each state, including one in Omaha, and resource partners like Small Business Development Centers. And I ran into the lady who heads it. Where is she? There you are. What's your name again? So we're going to have a little meeting and a photo afterwards. And SBDCs work so well with our businesses to help guide them marketing plans, um, how to structure their business plans. It's, it's just a phenomenal program. And most people think about SBA, <coughs> excuse me, and they think loans. We do guarantee loans, but it's so much more. Most, and I, I've talked a little bit about those services. So I'm really happy to be out around our country, visiting our district offices, because I just love hearing all the ideas and meeting with the people who are serving the communities through our SBA offices. And our resource partners, like our SCORE offices, our Women's Business Centers, our Veterans Outreach, called VBOX, all of these chapters are nationwide offering services to help businesses start, grow, transition from one level to the next. They help entrepreneurs do things like write a business plan, grow their product lines, build their customer base, or even expand to new markets. Last fiscal year, the SBA and its resource partners counseled or trained more than 1.4 million people. We also play a big role in connecting small businesses with contracting opportunities with the federal government. The federal government spends more than $400 billion each year in contracts of which more than 100 billion are set aside for small businesses. We run certification programs to help small businesses verify their credentials with other agencies, as well as help small businesses navigate the labyrinth of the government contracting process, which is no easy task. It is this administration's goal to ensure that the rural areas most impacted by capital flight are not forgotten. We believe you shouldn't have to live in a big city to have world-class resources, good jobs, and sustainable communities. Recently, I signed a memo of understanding with Agricultural Secretary Sonny Perdue to incre increase our cooperation to make sure there are economic opportunities for rural entrepreneurs to start and grow businesses. <laughs> I spent about two-thirds of a day in an RV in Ohio with Sonny Perdue. As we visited small businesses and had town halls, it was one of the most 
fun days I think I've had. And it's part of our program to get out into the local communities. And I, too, Governor Ricketts, so impressed by his knowledge of agriculture and the, and the farmers that he represents. And uh, we, we are really lucky to have him as our secretary. The MOU that we sign will enable SBA to leverage the massive distribution capabilities of USDA to collaborate and make available our services through the broad network of USDA offices and people. From the supply perspective, I'm also closely working with Labor Secretary Acosta and Education Secretary Betsy DeVos to ensure that we create a pipeline of skilled workforce to fill the jobs that these entrepreneurs are creating. My third goal is making sure the SBA operates as efficiently and effectively as possible. This means modernizing and streamlining our processes, such as through improving online access to capital. One example is a program called Lender Match. It's an online platform that connects small business borrowers with lenders who make the types of loans they're looking for. So in other words, if you're an entrepreneur, you want to start a business, you want to know what lenders are available in your area for your kinds of loans, you go on sba.gov to the lender match area, you enter your name, your address, whatever's required on the form, and you submit it, and within 48 hours, you will get feedback from lending institutions who are in your area who match the kinds of loans that you're looking for you can then contact them directly. So this can all be done from your iPad, your laptop, or your phone. We want to make sure that we can make it easier to find where these lending institutions are. We're also looking at how we can digitally extend that lending service that we provide through our delegated banks so that we can provide effective outreach to customers in rural areas where brick and mortar banks may be hard to get to. And that involves an expansion of broadband. As you know, I'm an entrepreneur myself. Decades ago, my husband and I started our business sharing a desk. And yes, our marriage did survive. <laughs> it was trying from time to time, but yes, it did survive. This August, we'll celebrate our 52nd wedding anniversary. And as I heard him say last night to her mother, as we, to his mother, as we celebrated her 98th birthday, he said, she was commenting on how long we'd been married. And, uh, and he said, the sacrifices I have made are not to be known. <laughs> as you may know, I'm an entrepreneur myself, and my husband and I did build a wonderful business together. Today, it's a publicly traded company with customers in 180 countries worldwide, and we built it market by market by market, investing the proceeds of one market into the next one until we expanded it across the United States and then globally. I am proof of the American dream, and I want more Americans to have that same opportunity for success. When the president asked me to lead the SBA, it was interesting, I went to uh, Trump Tower in New York I've known the president for about 25 years. And he asked me to come to Trump Tower. I knew he had something up his sleeve. And when I went in, I was talking to him, and he said, I, I, have, I have something to ask of you. He said, I, I'd like for you to head up the SBA. He said, and the reason is because I want somebody who has actually built a business, who knows the ups and downs. He also knew that I'd been bankrupt at one point and lost everything and had to rebuild after that. He said, I want somebody who can walk the walk and talk the talk of our entrepreneurs, large and small, across our country. And he said, and I think that you could do a good job doing that. I told him that I would, I'd do my best. And if there ever came a time that he didn't think I was up to the job, I would gladly step down. So, so far, we're doing okay. Some, he wanted somebody who understood what small businesses grow through, what keeps them up at night and how the policies that come out of Washington can either help or hinder their success. President Trump is also an entrepreneur, and he's made business growth and economic prosperity a key priority of this administration. The White House and the SBA know the best measure of our success is not in Washington, 
It is right here in your communities and in your state. It's from small towns to big cities, anywhere where people are taking a risk on an idea and turning that idea into a business. We are confident that a thriving economy will create an even stronger America. And as we work to create and help jobs grow throughout our states, our states and our small businesses are the backbone of our national economy. Thank you so very much for letting me spend a few minutes with you this afternoon. I enjoy that, and um, I'd like to come back again another time. Thanks so much.